tutorial, we're going to be replacing the blocks of coloured rectangles that have made up our map and player character so far with simple sprites and tiles drawn from an image file. The PNG file used for this tutorial can be downloaded from my website, along with a written version of the lesson and the complete source code should you wish to follow along. We'll begin by adding some more global variables. Tileset, which will store the image data itself when we load it later in the code. Tileset URL, which is the path to the image file we're using. And a boolean flag, tileset loaded, which we just use to show whether or not the image file has been loaded. Now we're going to update our tile types. For each tile we've defined, we're going to add a new property, sprite, which will contain an array with a single entry an object that contains the x and y position of the sprite for this tile relative to the top left of the image, and the width and height of the tile sprite. The reason we're using an array, despite there only being one sprite entry for each tile type, is to allow for easily changing to animated sprites at a later stage. We're also going to add an easily readable method for keeping track of directions. In C++ or Java we'd probably use an enum for this, but here we're just using another JavaScript object. Each of the properties just returns a number 0 to 3 for each of the cardinal directions. We'll also modify the character class to keep track of the current direction of our player. Additionally, we'll add a sprites property to the character class, and for each of the directions we'll specify a sprite on our image to be used. Again, we're using an array despite only currently specifying one frame for each sprite. The character movement methods are also updated. Now, when a move method is called, the character's current direction property is changed to the corresponding direction. Now we can actually load the tileset. We're doing this in the Windows onload method so we can be sure the rest of the page loading has completed. We begin by setting the tileset global to a new image object. To this object, we first add an error handler in case the image could not be loaded. If there's a problem, we destroy the canvas drawing context, CTX, by setting it to null, and show a warning message telling the user about the problem. We also add an onload event handler to the tileset object, which simply changes the tileset loaded global flag to true, so we know we're ready to render the game. After this, we just set the source property to the image file and the browser will try to load the image. Our drawing loop, draw game, now does another important check before drawing begins. It checks if the tile set has been loaded, and if not, it simply tells the browser to call again next time it's ready to try drawing, and stops. Inside our nested drawing loops, we're removing all of the fill style, fill rect code, and instead drawing sprites. We create a temporary variable called tile, which is assigned the tile types entry for the tile at the currently drawn coordinate and then we draw the corresponding portion of the image using the tile type sprite property at the appropriate position on the canvas. Similarly, for our player, we will remove our current drawing code and assign a variable the value of the player character sprite entry for the player's current direction. We then draw this section of the image to the canvas at the player's current position.
Immediately, things are starting to look better. This allows us to create detailed maps and characters that are no longer constrained to a solid rectangular shape. 